terms of the talks um, from Ted, who came all the way from LA, uh, who was hopefully going to be headed back to LA uh, if he can get out in the snow. So uh, they are just over there. Uh, buy them for cheap. So last but not least, uh, you're here to see Scott Moulton, and he is going to talk to you about DIY uh, hard drive diagnostics. Enjoy. Give him a hand. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Check, check. Everybody good? Okay. And I'll have some sounds and stuff. I'm going to play off my laptop today, so uh, it'll be the first time I tried to do that at a con, I think, other than uh, if anybody saw my recover porn from Raid Array. Anybody see that one? Yeah, we're in juggling, there's like porn going on. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, anybody seen any of the other videos and stuff I've done? It's like my fourth or fifth year here at, at, at SmooCon. Anything? Yeah, everybody good? All right, so my intent here is to kind of make like a series of videos that when you watch them in order, that it will be like this epic adventure for data recovery that you will know how to do some uh, like, you know, 80% of the drives by yourself without having to send them off to a data recovery company. And of course, I have data recovery companies that are pissed off at me for this, so... Uh, I try to get straight to the meat and potatoes. I don't want to spend 35 minutes talking about a VMware DD image. Uh, so just in case you want to know. So ultimately, uh, I have some goals for this talk. Uh, the first thing is obviously who the heck am I? Why is this Charlie Brown looking guy up here you know, trying to tell you about data recovery? I do data recovery for a living. I own a company called MyHardDriveDie.com, which has been around. Thank you. I have like 50 hours of video out there that's free, that's published, all on in-depth stuff. It's not fluff. It's not crap. It's the real stuff, so if you want to go look at how to do rate arrays or whatever else, I have demos and everything out there. Um, and it's not like marketing crap or anything, it's real shit. So, uh, so that's the first thing. I also run a forensics company side by side. We do alternating work between the two. So I do a lot of forensic work, a lot of data recovery jobs that are damaged drives in forensics cases. So, uh, so if you want to know some more, go to those, but I also teach classes, so if you like what I'm gonna do in an hour, well then, you know, if you want more and you don't want to wait for the next con, because it's a series of events over five years so far. Uh, the next one's going to be in Outer Zone uh, next month in Atlanta, uh, March 20th. So I'll have some cards and stuff up here for Outer Zone. If you guys want to come up and get one, you'll find out where it is, what it is. It's a small con, but I'm going to be doing a new talk there next month on data recovery. So the first thing is I want to make sure that when you walk out of this room, you at least know something new, not like some... Anyway, uh, just want to make sure you know something new you didn't know. So hopefully everybody will know something when they walk out of here, and probably, hopefully, a whole lot. Uh, make sure that you know when to stop doing data recovery. That's my biggest problem now is I've done this series of events where I started at higher end stuff. Now I'm actually going backwards. I'm going back to the beginning and saying, look, this is stuff you should have known in the first place before you got to the other advanced videos because of the emails and stuff I get on a daily basis now. Oh, I took the platters out or I took the heads out, and I want to replace them, and it's too late now. Sorry. Um, so... I want to make sure you know when to stop and say, look, I can't do this problem. And I give you specific examples so you know why. Uh, and B, this is obviously about as cheap as possible. So this is not about I bought a $15,000 tool and here's how to use it. I will give some quick short examples of what the difference is. But ultimately, the whole point is I'm trying to teach you how to do a lot of your own stuff without having to spend, you know, even in excess of $100 if you can avoid it. Uh, <clears throat> so and then I'm going to tell you about some things that suck, that get in our way. Uh, so there's lots of ugly text in this speech. If you want copies, they're already posted. I do not expect you to remember everything I say, so like flowcharts and stuff that I have up here that are really ugly, I've already posted on my site. So if you go to myharddrive.com slash mucon.html. It's already there, PDF, ready to go, download it. You can look at it now if you want. Um, but that way you don't have to remember. And if you don't remember schmucon.html, then you just uh, go to myharddrive.com presentations and it's at the top. So uh, it'll automatically be there. So... All right, so anyway, so this is the basics of what I'm trying to cover today. Like, these are the five major issues that you have to deal with when you're dealing with a hard drive and you want to know what's wrong with it. A lot of people will go, plugged in the hard drive, I don't get any user data. So what happened between there and not seeing my user data? That's what I'm focusing on here. So do you have a firmware problem? You got head damages, you know, boards are problems, motors, things like that. Where do you start? Where do you stop? And then do I actually have platter damage? So it's not always going to be this obvious, okay? This is obvious, and if you're doing this, you know uh, we're going to be dealing with either some soldering. You can't just swap boards in some cases, uh, and there are going to be some chips and stuff that you have to solder in certain cases. There are certain drives that you can just swap boards, but we're going to talk about those. So I can't just jump straight into diagnostics. I've got to back up a step and have to say, hey, look, what do you know now, and how do you sort of derive what these things are, especially if you don't have any fancy tools? 
So keep in mind there are these fancy tools. You can just plug stuff in and it tries to give you like a summary of what's wrong with the drive. And you still have to know something. It's still not like completely like, here's one button and it comes up and tells you, oh, I got a firmware problem or something. You still have to know quite a bit to make that happen. So in 10 minutes, I'm gonna try to make just kind of like a, and it may be 15 minutes, I don't know. Um, you know, a little bit of a basic idea about how we're dealing with what type of problem. So the first thing is, if you have a hard drive and it's dead, the very first thing that happens is somebody goes, oh, I want to swap heads. I think it's a head problem. I want to swap heads. I'm trying to stop you before you get that far to say, let's don't swap parts. Even boards, you have to be very careful with going buying an identical drive and then swapping the board. And I know I've said that in some previous events, but some newer things have come out lately that can cause damage with the boards. And in certain drives like Western Digitals, you may need to unsolder a chip and move it. And it may not do damage if you swap the board, but it's not going to work either. So without that, you need to know that. So I want to make sure you know, if you're thinking about swapping parts, when do, we, when do we actually discuss that? Where are we actually going to talk about practicing with a drive? And I get these emails all the time too. I got this one drive in from my client. It's not working right. Where do I buy a donor drive so I can swap heads? This is not like in five minutes I learned how to swap a head. It's not easy. This is like go get a dozen hard drives and go play with them and figure out how to do it first and make it work. I do not want to, you know, in any way, shape, or form tell people you don't need to practice. I mean, that was never the intent at all. It was always go get a dozen drives, rebuild a working drive back to a working state, and then you might actually be ready to do that. But don't do it on the client drive. They always practice later. Like, oh, I tried that, now it doesn't work, and now they try another drive and it's too late. So, so anyway, so that's what we're trying to do. So this is, so over the years of doing data recovery and going through this process and then developing a class that, you know, I do teach it like, you know, some FBI agents and things like that, uh, teaching a class, I basically have these five steps. And there's this one that loops back. So in the diagnostics process, I end up looping back like, hey, if it works, we're already in the process of imaging and copying sectors. And if that works, we continue on. But if not, then we're going to repair the drive and we're going to start all over again and loop back through this particular process. So. What our goal is, primarily, is imaging. Now, I know a lot of you are, oh, I've done, who's done forensics imaging? Yeah, you're all doing it wrong. All right. <clears throat> well, not you, okay. He's not doing it wrong, because we've been educated. Uh, so anyway, so ultimately the point is, is what does a, when you do a forensics image and you use something like, I don't know, DD, FTK image, or whatever, when you're doing an image and it gets to a bad sector, what happens? What is it? Yeah, it either stops and dies, or what does it put there if it's able to continue? Uh, Zeros, right? There was data there, right? There was data there. So if you got 512 bytes, and let's just say one is wrong, can, if you could still get the rest, that doesn't make the rest wrong, right? So there's still a process in which you do not have to pad all of that data. There's still a couple of things that you can actually do to read from those damaged sectors. So if I'm able to do that, say, ignoring ECC or getting some other content back and filling those sectors, and it's not zero, it's got to be better than zero, right? The other problem with zero is that zero doesn't indicate anything different than the rest of the unallocated space on the drive that was zero in the first place. So unless you're writing like bad, bad, bad there, you don't know the difference between what was a bad sector and then what you need to fill in versus empty space that was already zero in the first place. Not that it's always zero because sometimes there's just unallocated crap out there that you got to recover from. But ultimately, our point is we got to stop thinking about files. For the most part, I want to forget about files, and I'll kind of show you some cool stuff that includes files. But ultimately, I deal with sectors. So this way, I don't have to care if it's an encrypted drive. I don't have to care if it's you know what is on the drive or what OS it is. I can almost always deal with the sectors. Even if I'm doing an AS400, like anybody know what size? Like everybody knows you know the physical size of a sector is 512 bytes. Anybody know what size a, a sector is on an AS400? 500 what? 522. It's 522. Uh, so the other 10 is, is ECC stuff in there that you can just strip out. But what happens if you hook up 522 byte hard drive to a write blocker? What is a write blocker? Anybody know? What is it? A write blocker is a piece of hardware with software running on it that then intercedes so that it can pass that along. So the first thing that's going to happen is going to lock up or crash you won't get a response from your write blocker, but it doesn't mean you can't copy those sectors. So I'm just making an example here that there's actually ways that you can actually go through this imaging process dealing with sectors, forget about files and other stuff, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. So 